your soul, your compass, your journey, your light. Welcome to a podcast for your soul. This is your host, Nico Balschweit. And this podcast is for spiritual people who are interested to listen to spiritual teachers from around the world. And it's my desire to connect spiritual cultures from around the world. And today's guest is Bharati Corinna Glanat. And uh, Bharati is a spiritual wisdom teacher, and she received her initiation in 2001 when she was given access to uh, sacred and secret uh, Vedic knowledge. And this led her to a 10 years uh, intense practice of uh, sadhana meditation. After being touched by the depths of her own soul, uh, she returned to Germany and founded the uh, Spirit Balance Sadhana Ashram in Sassbachwalden, which is in the beautiful Black Forest. Uh, and she offers many things. So, for example, one is a darkroom retreat. That's also the way we connect. And I will share later more about my experience in the darkroom retreat. She's doing astral projection workshops. She's also specialized in opening the third eye and the heart. And uh, Bharati uh, shares also the power of the mantra chanting, which I thought was profound when I saw this in her, her ashram. Uh, and she um, is a tour guide. She's doing spiritual journeys to India, where she introduces participants to real sadhus and yogis. So it's a real ad adventure if you as a listener out there are interested to uh, go for the first time and have some guidance and meet real uh, yogis, then that would be uh, a way to go. So, Bharati, I'm thrilled to have you uh, on my show, and I welcome you from my heart. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Yeah. It's such a pleasure um, to have you. Yes, so uh, how did we come up with this interview? So what happened is, uh, last week, I had a darkroom retreat uh, in Bharati's ashram. Bharati was not there, so we see each other for the first time, now here live. But I was so touched and had such a tremendous experience in this retreat um, that I reached out and uh, Bharati uh, agreed to do uh, this interview with me and we share uh, about this and, and all her work. Beautiful. So there's so many things to, to cover. Maybe the first thing which I'm interested, people might be interested. Can you share with us what is uh, sadhana meditation? Mm -hmm. Sadhana is actually um, means that you're doing something for your soul. Sadhana means you um, repeating, for example, mantras, or you're doing karma yoga, or you're doing bhajans, or you're doing facility work. You're doing something to go closer to God, but in a really intense way. So mm. normally when we are, um, you know, in the West, we meditate maybe half an hour or hour. So if you do a sadhana way, it's always very intense. Like, for example, meditating um, for yeah, 10 hours, 8 hours. Mm. Um, so there are different paths. There are many different ways. But sadhana is the uh, is, uh, main uh, word for mm. doing spiritual intense exercise. Let's say like this. Uh, yeah, no, that, that makes very clear. Because I have, let's see, um, one second. I need to share my screen here. Yeah, there is uh, one thing which I have. This is from your retreat center mm -hmm. where you do uh, like a Hanuman Shalisa um, prayers and mantras. And then it says you do this 108 times. Uh, I love the Hanuman Chalisa. It's very long. But one, so I, I guess this takes at least 10 hours, or doesn't yes. it? Yeah. Yes. In the beginning, my first 108 times took me like uh, 14 hours around. Wow. <laughs> wow. Now I'm by 8.5 hours around. Mm. And so it goes faster and faster as much you getting that energy. And we're doing that, I think, uh, six or seven years already. Um, or no longer. No, I'm doing like nine years. No, nine years I'm doing Hanuman Chalisa twice a year uh, for 108 times. Mm -hmm. And um, I came there to Hanuman, for example, um, in a time in my life where I faced some negativity mm -hmm. and I heard Hanuman is a very protective mm -hmm. vibration and very, very high justice, you mm -hmm. know, very divine light soul. 
and I was listening to the Chalisa all the time, mm -hmm. also in my first Dark Nutsu Treat I did. I listened to that all the time. And um, then I could feel the energy. And since then, I'm doing that twice a year. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I'm also uh, very close and connected to Lord Hanumana. Oh, really? Uh, wow. Yes, yeah. yeah, I have also, we have a, a statue here, uh, which was oh. made in Germany based on an uh, Indian picture. So it's handmade, it was made for me. Uh, and I, uh, I used to take also the Hanuman Chalisa a lot. Uh, and it's just this, as you say, this uh, protection where he's the um, servant of Lord Rama and Sri right. Sita. And uh, the, the whole uh, mystic behind it is so beautiful. And there's this one picture. I think when I fell in love with uh, Sri Hanumana is when uh, he was asked, what is in your heart? And he opened his heart and there was only Sri Rama and Sri Sita. Mm -hmm. And it was so um, for commitment in love and serving yeah so uh yeah and of course i love monkeys <laughs> so yeah so oh, now now i have to say now i'm really surprised because not many people know about the power of hanuman mm. and so i didn't know that from you wow that is amazing yeah and it's the same with my wife yeah so mm. when i returned and I, I showed her many things i had a gift for her and so on and then she saw this um brochure about uh, hanuman chalisa she says oh i would be interested and wow. i said yeah me too so maybe one day we, we will come Yes, yeah. nice. nice. So that that's beautiful. Yes, we have a saying here at home: is if we need to achieve a lot in one day, then we say, "Oh, today I need a Hanumana factor." <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, because yeah. He, he removes all the obstacles, uh, and that's that's beautiful. Yeah. And also our ego, you know, he's connected mm. to the air element, and that uh, the five elements is the element of the monkey mind, you know, the mm. mind always wondering and um, when we open that up we getting not just to surrender and opening the heart but also our thoughts come down and we get more focus mm. yeah yeah. Cool. yeah he tickles the ego quite a lot yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful so um so what what happens usually with participants uh, let's say you have participants who who do this for the first time um is it a big challenge for them to do this longer than 10 hours or uh, do you have breaks in between or what is the process of that yeah um so yeah it's challenging and i always say please relax if people comes for the first time they read the chalisa of course they want to do it right and i always say also close your eyes in between relax feel the energy and there are some musicians and we never know you know who's hanuman bringing so mm -hmm. we that like other people organized before we always feel like okay let's see who comes with the guitar <laughs> if nobody comes or also Shali says I had to chant all the time mm -hmm. um, uh, with my husband and I was just switched and um, so normally there's enough people to hold that energy but mm -hmm. of course the people who chant all the time who know the Chalisa for them it's also intense uh, same time if you finish the 108 times after that the energy is also so amazing so mm -hmm. after the 108 times we do a, a one hour of silence so we don't make any break in between so you can leave the room for going to toilet or drinking a smoothie um, but we don't make a real break so oh keep up the energy and there's always some people in the room drumming and singing and yeah mm -hmm. and that it's amazing when you go out to drink a smoothie you still hear that mm -hmm. and uh, that is really really beautiful especially when you come in silence then you still hear that you know you still mm -hmm. hear the vibration sometimes can go on for days and you have a real different energy in mm -hmm. I have one person he comes almost every time to the Hanuman Chalisa and he says every time he comes for the 108 times he feels like three to five months he feels like like you know yeah. energized yes yeah yeah I mean this is uh, the an intense way to do puja right um, and so I, I, I did it also a lot, but not for such a long duration. Mm -hmm. um, and I can imagine also what we did. I used to do a lot of havans, like fire mm -hmm. ceremony and wow. uh, Hanuman Chalisa or Rama Kavach. And, and then there is this point where um, th there is no thought anymore. Right. Then you become the prayer. Right. And then is you, it's almost like you worship that this, this entity and uh, this divine presence within yourself. Right. And then you're in the flow and this is just, oh. Yeah. 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 And actually I chant every night the Chalisa as well, one to five times, depends wow. on the 
much. I love to do that um, mm -hmm. in our temple room downstairs. And if I don't do it, I start to miss it. <laughs> yeah. So it's really in a beautiful attachment now. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's very empowering. Um, I'm just read the uh, uh, biography of Tina Turner. Oh. And because I was in a musical in Hamburg when I was just blown away by that. And and then when I was reading the book, she said she obviously she had a very, very tough life. Huh? Okay. The, when it was the toughest you can imagine, where she was completely uh, poor, uh, she chanted every day in the morning two hours and in the night two hours. And just singing, chanting, singing, chanting. And basically that was her survival mechanism. But then that, that she did it for survival. But what happened is that she became so in tune also with, with her uh, presence and soul that she, uh, I think she said that was the, the key to, help to be available for the audience and to give that yeah, back. Beautiful. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Me, um, me, I, did, I didn't know it either. It's just uh, when I, I just heard it. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I felt too. I was at a time in my life where I felt hmm, something's falling apart. I didn't feel mm. well. And when I chanted and listened, even to just listen, you know, things mm. changed. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there's this um, other fascinating topic. So you are worldwide known as an expert for facilitating darkroom retreats. Mm -hmm. So how did you learn about this and how did this come to you? And yeah, actually, that is very interesting. <laughs> I was not planning to do that. You know, this is how life worked. Um, I lived in India for so long. Mm -hmm. and when I came back to Germany, um, my father had a cancer. So I felt, okay, now it's the time to be around in Germany a little bit. And um, I felt, okay, before I knew he had a cancer, before I knew I start to be here, I did my own darkness retreat. Um, because before in India, I was meditating a lot, but there was always some light, you know, it was, you know, even if you do 10 hours, 12 hours of mantra chanting, you are in the light and the mind goes on and, you know, you see the people. And so I felt, okay, I really want to do a darkness retreat. And I went inside and actually what I wanted to do is I wanted to do sadhana. I felt, oh yeah, now I have some time for sadhana. And... <laughs> And it didn't happen because I was so tired. I don't know, some, you know, my melatonin was just like wanting to come out and I was sleeping like two. And then I said, okay, let me sleep for two, three days. And then I do the practice, which is very unusual for me because I had a lot of um, very, very high um, level of, um, how you say, um, discipline. Mm. Um, um, and uh, I don't know, when I really relaxed, I had huge experiences all of a sudden. Um, astral projection, uh, I saw things in my third eye, I saw, you know, amazing things. I, I connected with my consciousness to higher levels and I felt like, what? This is just happening after three days. Mm. <laughs> Normally I have to meditate for that state for 10 years or something. Mm. And there the first third calm came. Oh, okay, maybe that's something I want to include and not just to teach but to be able to give the people experiences because that's in my heart. You know, I want to help people to get the experiences and not just talk about it. And then my father got a cancer. Actually, that was also interesting in the darkness retreat. Um, my father didn't have the, a diagnosis yet and mm. he didn't know and I didn't know. And mm. his soul um, came to me. I saw him like a mist appearing mm. in front of me and he said I should be not sad in his lung in the left side lung is like this size of cancer and he will not survive that but um, I should be strong for my mother and he he knew that in his soul you know can you imagine we didn't have the, uh, the we had no clue you know, we even didn't had an idea mm. then when I came out of the darkness retreat um, that happens and the diagnosis came and exactly on the on the picture, mm. um, X-ray, yeah. thank you. They found exactly that size, the size of tumor. But my father in the mind was shocked. You mm. know, that was an interesting experience, you know, in his soul, you know, but mm. in his mind, his mind and was not able to get that. So mm. at that time I felt, okay, let me be in Germany. Now it's not good to go back to India. And then I felt, what should I do? <laughs> because mm. they told him he will only have one month to live. And a yogi in India said, don't worry, I will help you. Because my mother and my father said, 
we don't really believe in spirituality, but now is the time to prove if you can help to prolong that. Um, but my father was not, he, you know, he didn't want it to change. He didn't want it to chase his, his food, you know, he used mm. to smoke a cigarette. But at least a yogi did some yantra for him mm. and we did, we gave him some herbs and he lived over a year. So that was still good. And he went without pain, with a smile in his face. It was beautiful. It was mm. really, really divine. It was really blessed. So at that time, you know, I started to think, okay, what to do? <laughs> and I felt, okay, let me find a place where I also have another room for, you know, putting somebody in darkness if they want to do some sadhana, let's say, in the Indian terms. Mm. And this is how it started. And um, yeah, now it's in between my move now two times. Now it's eight rooms. <laughs> I started with that one room. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's how it happened. <clears throat> Yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's just such a profound experience. So it's very interesting how it came to me. Um, in and my my listeners who listen regularly they know this because in episode episode ten, I had a lady. Her name is uh, Devi Ratna Jewel, and she communicates to the uh, spirit of the dolphins and the whales. So when I asked her, so when did you learn about this gift? Then she said, okay, she went to a dark retreat in Mexico for 11 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, after a week, all of a sudden, the spirit of the dolphin came and they told her exactly what to do in order to rescue the dolphins and the species, which she is doing now. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And then I was like, wow, this is interesting. And then my soul was resonating so strong that uh, I thought, okay, uh, and I would love to do this, yeah. Mm. But I didn't want to go to Mexico, and I found something in Greece, and then I looked in Germany, and then I found your retreat center, and immediately I loved it. I loved everything uh, uh, on the website of what you do, and then um, I ordered the free book. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So for the uh, listeners who are interested to go into the uh, darkroom retreat, you can order a free book in German language, oh. and also in English. It's also oh, it's also in English. Ah, even better. I just didn't yeah. put it in yet, but it's also available in English, and I have the copies. Here. Yes, but. Yeah, and and what I found really amazing in this book is is basically um, a collection of people who share their experience from the dark room retreat, yeah. uh, retreat, and it's completely authentic. Yes. It's not it's not hallelujah. Everyone is fantastic. No, there are people struggling. There are people who didn't like it, but then the majority they had an amazing experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So, so that was then. It's just my soul told me, you, mm -hmm. you need to go. Yeah, and then I was trying to schedule how when do I do this? And it's so, so difficult. And I tried to get something, but I'm traveling a lot. So I had to uh, deliver a training in Russia and Moscow. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, of course, the training was canceled and I had nothing else in my agenda during that time. Mm -hmm. So then I uh, wrote an email to you and you had a room available and I just went for it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was for me, it was fascinating because I went there. Um, I, I love the ashram, so the big ashram with a, a seminar room, with a, with a temple, a great kitchen, fantastic uh, power foods, and then there are this uh, the setting of these dark rooms. So, and then I'm in the dark room, and I had this revelation. About, I sit down in the first ten minutes. It's almost like yes, I did it. Mm. It was not a, a thought anymore. Whatever happens, happens. That's fine. But I'm here, and 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 I, will, I do it. The next thing what happened is, exactly as you said with the melatonin, I felt that there was such a rush of adrenaline dropping out of my body. Where I was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Because, and then I realized how it is, if you, no one can reach you. Obviously, I turned my phones in. <laughs> it's dark. I don't have an agenda. I don't need to do anything because I'm taken care of. I get this beautiful uh, smoothies and everything. And then this is, there's nothing to do and nowhere to go. And I'm just with myself and my soul. Oh, and this, and then I realized how much pressure I have on a day-to-day -day life. Wow. I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that, but that immediately dropped. And then what happened in the first night? I was awake. All of a sudden, the spirit of my wife came. Mm -hmm. So she was in the room, and then I could see her, but apparently she couldn't see me. <laughs> and she said, uh, "Is it okay to be here?" But, but I couldn't talk because I'm in a silent retreat. Oh. So I couldn't talk. 
Um, and I'd somehow I'd, I didn't want to be touched. So I just internally, I said, it's all good. Uh, it's just my process and I'm fine. And then all of a sudden she said, yeah, looks like you're fine. And she disappeared. <laughs> so she, now, wanted she, or she wanted to check on you. Yeah, yeah, she wanted to check on me. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> now what, what is now comes the fascinating thing. Um, that was her spirit. Now, when I came back, she told me that after the first night, she was not allowed to give any thought to me. No, no blessings, no nothing. Uh, yeah. And then I said, yeah, you've been there. Yeah. She said she sensed something, but it's al almost like it's, it's my process. It's exactly, that's, that's what I said to her in the dark room, in my mind. That's what she said to me. I was giving the information. It's your process and it's sacred. And I need to honor that. It's your space. And I went, wow. I mean, this is how spirit communicates, right? Um, and then, so I, for me, uh, I found it easy uh, because I had this time to meditate a lot and I did a, a little bit yoga, some stretching uh, also, and I found it very purifying. And I had three times the same vision. And the vision was, so I look at the ceiling and then there is a whole opening and it opens wide and I peek through the hole and then I see the universe and the stars. And then it goes wider and wider and all of a sudden, I'm in the universe. And it's almost like watching cinema and I was like, wow. And I said, but it's dark here, what's happening? Is it, and then I, the first time of course thought kicked in and I thought maybe it is some projection of my mind. Uh, but I said, anyway, I enjoy it as long as it lasts. So, and I could really take a look at the universe, okay? And this happened three times. So when at the third time, I just know, okay, this is something different. It's just spirit seeing. Yes. And, and only after three days, of the fourth day actually that that was, yeah. Um, so that was, was a beautiful experience. But then I'm, I become emotional. Mm. Because what happened, of course, um, when, when I was picked up uh, and I was guided outside. So for the listeners, the way it works is basically... Uh, you are asked if you're ready to go back into the light, then you have blindfolds on and someone is guiding you outside and then uh, they created a, a, a nice seat outside on your terrace, yeah, and we went there. Uh, then I had someone greeting me. I think that, that was uh, Shanti the cat. Shakti. Hiya. Shakti. Shakti, yeah. Shakti. Shakti, yeah. Okay. And she went with me all the time. So around me, that felt somehow nice, yeah. And uh, so I was sitting there. What I also like is the way... Uh, you you just respect the the room of the people, right? Because then I was here some water. We leave you alone and take as much time as you want to. Yes. You know? And then I was sitting there, and I became already emotional because I could smell the air, I could hear more, and did the breeze of the wind, and that was already special. And then I had the blindfold on, but I opened the eyes inside with the blindfold on. And then I was a little light coming in to the blindfold, just a little light. I tell you that moment, I had to make namaskar to Mother Earth. Wow. I mean, it's just, there was such a gratitude. And it's still up, it was a week ago. So it's still up today, my gratitude for Mother Earth and for the trees, for the colors, for the nature, is, is a totally different level. Yeah, When I go for a walk now, which I do every day since I'm back, because I just want to embrace that and I didn't see it before, the liveliness of the trees, of the grass, of everything. Yeah. So then, tears were running already. Um, and then I took the blindfold off, but I closed my eyes. Yeah. And it was like really as like the sun would be in my third eye. It's so, and, and later I recognized it was not even, it was sunny, but also cloudy. So it was not that there was full sun. But my experience was, it's just almost, I can't look at it. It's so, wow, yeah, so strong. Yeah. And, and then... Yeah, I opened my eyes and, and I saw a different world. Wow. I saw there were so many shades of green, so not shades of gray, shades of green in, in the forest, in the black forest, but also in Germany, here also. And I, I have this, if I look from my balcony, but to be honest, I never realized that. Yeah, mm -hmm. But there you see, I mean, hundreds of different uh, green colors and different trees and everything is alive. And I was like, ah, I just, I was really in awe and wonder of this 
auric field of, of mother nature. Yes. Yeah. So, so thank you for that experience. Um, it was just beautiful. And that was also where immediately I had this longing to connect with you and to learn more about mm. that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Not everybody has this beautiful experience. It uh, really depends on which level you are already in your past. Um, but those who have that, you know, they fall in love with what we have. And, and this um, unconditional love, you know, is flowing and opening our hearts. And it's really amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I also had similar experience uh, coming in the light. And I was thinking, how can that be that we are not realizing all the that beauty normally which is around us you know that is uh, yeah yeah, yeah that, that is a part of enlightenment you know that sometimes mm -hmm. uh, going outside can be even stronger than experiences inside the darkness yeah absolutely yeah. and then also then I went back inside and I would and uh, Sabine gave my phones back to me okay mm -hmm. so and I was a little bit dark and I switched on my phones I could not believe how bright they are. How bright. I mean, it's just, what, really? <laughs> and I use it for years all the time. I'm on this mobile phone and I say, and I couldn't look at it. Mm -hmm. And then there is this, uh, my daughter then told me, there's this night shift, but you can do it all the time as well. So now I have my phones on the night shift mode, which takes something blue, uh, blue light out of it, which doesn't make it so aggressive, much better. Um, but then I also realized the reason why I didn't see was I'm so overloaded with uh, social media, uh, email, uh, TV, and, and everything what's happening around. Right. Um, that that was that. Yeah, it 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 takes the vision away, the real vision. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So all my gratitude goes to you and also to Retreat Center because the people there are so caring. It's beautiful, power food, um, mm -hmm. and what is also interesting, you don't need a lot of food there. Because no. really, I thought, yeah, I, I, I take raw food three times a day. But then Sabina said, yeah, usually people change to smoothies, which yes. I had in the morning and in the evening. And only f uh, during lunch, I had uh, raw, raw food, which was amazing. But then I realized I could do it easily with, uh, with smoothies only. Yeah? Right. So that's also a, a process of detoxing, right. which is also, um, yeah, so... I also lost two and a half kg. So if someone is interested in losing some weight, that's also one opportunity. <laughs> yeah. but, but it's, it's, I understand also it's not for everyone. So mm -hmm. um, my, my older daughter also uh, talked to me and she said initially, well, that, why, do, why do you torture yourself? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and as she said, initially she wouldn't do it. But then when, when I did it and we talked later, she said also during the time I was in the retreat, she researched about that yeah and she learned more and now then she said you know what now i'm also a bit curious yeah so let's uh, let's see um yeah but so again for every, every listener you can uh, order a, a book for free with uh, all this experience from people you can tune in for yourself um there, there is also you have like a trial for two and a half days is that correct yes yeah. so we don't recommend it so much so only if you really if you know if you still have a lot of fear or you feel mm -hmm. I'm not sure, sure because the DMT comes out mostly after three to five days through the melatonin which is produced in the pineal gland um, you know to say very quickly I mean there are a lot of processes but um, so that starts after three to five days and then you really go deep and you start to see the lights and things but um, that's why I recommend always a lo longer retreat but if you're not sure and you want to try it out yeah it's possible to come for two and a half Mm. And then there is also the option which you offer that uh, you can have a person coming to you yeah. uh, once a day to to share or whatever is moving through you and then it's you or someone else holding space and supporting that person, right? Yeah. And we are very picky who we send in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do um, also, how you say, in English Ausbildung. We do trainings for mm -hmm. people, you know, we bring them in. Yeah, and we have a team, and that's Sabine, Maria, my husband, or me right now. Mm -hmm. um, there might be more people coming in the future, but right now this is a team. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that is also recommended in case if that triggers in the beginning some fear. There are some people who feel, wow, darkness retreat, let me go in, that's great, you mm -hmm. know. Then 
you know, you can also try a silent retreat. Um, but if you feel already nervous and you know that your mind is strong, if you don't have so much meditation experience, it's this talking helps because we don't have any plan or, you know, any structure or, you know, we just be there and be holding the space and reflecting what is and try to lift the energy, you know, mm -hmm. lift up from the mind, connect to the soul. And that is always very surprising and beautiful what happens and it's important to sometimes laugh about you know negative stuff that comes out and heal and not take everything so serious so sometimes the talking really helps to lift it mm. up and i always say you have to feel it inside you if you feel i want to be in silence i don't want to talk then you should do silence if you feel mm. oh, i don't know this is who okay mm. then it's better to do with the talking mm. Or if you have, uh, uh, some people have even a subject which they come in or something where they feel they want to work on. Mm. And that might even change, you know. I had people coming in with, oh, I, I'm looking for another job. What should I do with my life purpose? Mm. And then next day, it was there and something else popped up, you know. <laughs> you mm. never know. Yeah. But, you know, if you feel uh, it's good to talk, then you should do that. And we also have groups. So when I do the groups, that's a also different dynamic. Everybody has their own room, but two to three times a day, I meet with them. Uh, on, on Monday, I start an astral protection group. And uh, so we do techniques together and talk together and train lucid dreamings and yeah, go also into some techniques and um, working with blockages. So they have a completely different dynamic also. Oh, okay. Thanks for sharing. I, I misunderstood that. So that means uh, for the majority of the time, I would have my own room. Right. And then you do something collective, but still in the dark, right? Right, right. There's okay. one group the room, which is completely dark also. Mm -hmm. And then I share with, uh, I meet with everybody, if you want. You know, I sometimes I have groups which has four to five people or six people. And then uh, I ring a bell and only a few people come out, like, for example, six people are in the group, but only wow. three people come out. And, you know, it's not a, you don't have to, you know. Sometimes mm. in the group, you might feel, oh, today I need a silent day. Mm. Um, but also in the group, a lot of beautiful energy can build up, uh, especially um, I do the healing group once a year. And in the last healing group, for example, they didn't know each other before. They had no clue. It was three people, two men and one woman. And had no clue, but mm. they all had the same a childhood experience, mm. traumatic, but really the same story. I mean, you know, how many million of people or billion of people we have on the planet? And this read, mm. you know, it was like the same story, but two male and one female, and you know, by sharing their story, so much healing happened and so much uplifting. It was amazing. After they went out together in the light, they, of course, they were friends, you know. Um, <laughs> it was yeah. like, it was amazing. Yeah, I, and I can echo that all, all the time. I mean, that's how spirit works. So uh, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, Petra facilitated a healing circle in the Lighthouse, which is our uh, workshop center. Um, it was just a uh, two-hour workshop. And then people come with whatever they want to work on. And uh, then she facilitates uh, some healing techniques where we give blessings to one person in the center and again as you just said um the four people had really the the same issue see and and then they understood each other and i think that created a, a, a total different uh, soul resonance altogether yeah so I even have that in, you know, when I do single retreats with single mm -hmm. talking, sometimes I have four or five retreats and they don't need, to, they don't know each other and mm -hmm. they don't know what I talk in each room. And even there, there are some energy field creating and those people are somehow connected. Their stories are somehow connected. So it's very mm -hmm. magic. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Podcast for your soul, your compass, your journey, your light.